We're here to solve this top of skyscrapers puzzle by Freddie Hand. It actually ends up solving a lot more like across the streams or paint by numbers in different ways. There are no internal topic clues that may actually be where the title silence of the topic comes from. Um, the thing I've always noted with tapas skyscrapers or other puzzles are that these really large outside clues are very, very constrained. Way to think about them, almost in paint by numbers uh, type, is a, the very smallest way, and it's not that this has to be this way, but the very smallest way that this kind of clue can be fulfilled is with a one group and a two group and a three group and in a paint by numbers type approach. Um, the furthest left you can pack a shading like that looks like this, and the furthest right you can pack a shading like this is here. And uh, all of these can move around, so that one could be one left, these could be left, but what you'll see is that in any shading of a one, two, three, this eighth column must be used. It's the rightmost point of this leftward packed three, and it's the leftmost point of this rightward packed three. And that's a forced deduction at the start. And admittedly, this could be a 1, 2, 4 or a 1, 2, 5. Those just involve shading more of these cells. Or it could be a 1, 3, 4. And that would be this cell being used and then these four cells being used. But in all of the valid forms of a three top of skyscrapers clue, the eighth column is used and will be part of a three or larger group that's coming left or right from it. This will similarly have a three or larger group coming left or right from it. The cell will have a three or larger group coming left or right from it. The cell will have a three or larger group going up or down from it. And the cell will have a three or larger group coming up or down from it. Always taking the eighth cell in these rows, eighth cell in this column, eighth cell in that column. The real thing, though, that I think, I haven't solved this puzzle in a while, but I think the real thing that it's going to break this open as actually recognizing something else about these clues. While the large cell is often how I start atop a skyscraper's puzzle, the other side of these clues has uh, a singleton. And however, you know, say the first cell and this, this row is like this one, it means that the left and right are blank. And so any cell that's uh, shaded will have an up down immediately near it to get out in the same way a cell shaded here is going to have a left right immediately to get out because it's going to be surrounded by empty cells near it and that means that in a place like this this corner is going to have a clue or two uh, but wherever you shade this first one of like a one two three or one two four or anything else this first one say it were exactly here what you'd see is the left and right cells have to not be used because we need to have the first group in this row be a one, but similarly, the first group in this column is a one, and so we isolate a cell right away. And so seeing that we have to have pretty small starts to these large clues, when a corner has two large clues that point at each other, that intersection point looks like a danger zone, and it is a danger zone. We really can't use it. And what that will do is now force in the second column now a nine cell pattern, not a 10 cell pattern. And from paint by numbers deductions, you would now have one and two and a maximum of three or three and two and one. And the ninth cell and that space will always be part of the three, whether it's those three cells or these three cells. And there's now actually one more constrained cell. Uh, the two could be here or here, but the cell is always used. And so marking this as unused and then marking this as shaded look to be really key steps to get this puzzle started. We talked about how we're going to mark off the ones left or right, so another one comes up down here. But having marked this in, we know how to fit a two or uh, I guess larger, but at least two size group in this intervening space, which will be here. There's at least one cell that's unused there. This will be at least one more cell of a potential three large group. We've now formed a potential two by two square, so the cell isn't used. This clue still needs to have as many as three cells in its largest side, so it's going to have to come back from a shaded position. And it actually has to be exactly this, one, two, and three, shaded this way. So that clue is now fulfilled regardless of how this is completed. These cells are not usable based on a two by two rule around these two squares. This clue still needs a three or larger group. It's gonna take this cell. 
There are some more things to do now, it looks like, on this left side with connectivity. Uh, I guess the first thing is there's going to be a one uh, shaded group here, a two in this column, and a three. And the way that this cell is getting out, this cell also has to get out to stay connected. So it's going to come up at least one more cell. What we see is we're going to, looks like we have two ways to get out, recognizing that only one of these cells in this column is taken. We need to take essentially a stretch of three from the first column to the third column. And the, the clues on the outside of this grid, a two skyscraper clue, would mean if we take at least three, we need to then take at least four in the next set. And there's no way to take four shaded cells in this, this row, this third row. If we take these three, mark this off, we can take two or three. We could never fulfill this clue. So that's a long way of saying that at this stage in the puzzle, the escape for these cells is through the second row. And as I've shaded it, and this first group will be three. It could be four, but it can't take all of these cells, so at least one of these is empty. And there'll be a group of at least four, maybe five, in the remaining spaces. And this would be the leftmost packing of four cells. One, two, three, four is the rightmost packing of four cells. And all of the shadings that we just contemplated, these two cells are used. The cell is not used. That deduction looks to quickly feed up to the top row. And this group needs to have at least three in its largest group. Those are here. That gives me this cell is not used, so this feed quickly feeds back to the second row. We need to take at least four cells in a shaded contiguous group. So these four, these three, we've now fulfilled that clue. The two can't take as many as five at the start because it won't have a second larger group, so it's going to take just those two. Uh, come down here, this isn't usable. Looks like the uh, next kind of key thing is going to be in this space, and that's seeing that you can't connect all of these cells here through the top. This three, now that the largest group is there, is exactly a one, two, three, and there could be some other one in here, but the longest group that can happen in this space is only too long, and looks like the only twos that can actually happen are these, these two. So this cell is shaded and is part of a two group, but one of these diagonals is gonna be a breaking point. And so if this took this cell here, this is unused, and so the, the top has to extend this way. If this, this cell were used, this is not used, and the top is similarly still has to take cells this way. So a deduction we can make is that this cell must be used, the top must come out this way, it must still come out so that all of these extend to the rest. So these, these shadings are helpful. Um, this three that we just put in now gets a blocker, which is going to become critical pretty soon. This row has only singletons, it needs to take at least two more. Um, this clue is going to take at least two cells, but this one will have to be used. I think that's a lot of the row clues. Let's pivot and look at the column clues. We haven't talked at at any length about singletons, but these one clues really force uh, a lot in the puzzle. We actually have the same kind of logic for the first and third column right now. We have a stretch of four, so anything that's further below, this could be the only group in the grid, but if it had other groups in the grid, it would have to also be four or larger. And if you shaded the cell, it could only be one. It would form a two by two box and have to cancel. If you shaded this, it would only be one. There are three cells left, three is less than four, so this clears out. We do have to take this cell to keep things connected. These two cells have to connect to the rest. But once we take the cell, because three is a larger group behind it, we have to take at least three cells with it. And that's these three cells, that cancels this. We can't take the singleton. And with this being three, this can't be one larger, and so we actually force this in the grid. Um, this column now actually looks like with a three placed, it's going to be a one, two, three in some order. And so we know that the cell must be part of the two and there must be a gap in one of those cells. 
actually are a few more steps to do, but it looks like this, this row is the one to look at right at this moment. Similar to what we saw in these columns with the one clues, this one clue has two at the end of it, so it can't have a singleton at the start of it. If I took either of these cells, they'd be isolated because of the two by two rule. And so the, these aren't used, but this whole space of the top and upper right only has this cell to escape by right now, so it must take this. When it takes this, this singleton must take at least one more cell to be as large as or larger than these two. Um, I know I have to take at least one of these cells, similar connectivity reason, this upper left part of the grid, if it didn't take either of these cells would be stranded, and it can't take both of these cells because of the uh, no two by two rule on the top of the puzzle. I think the key uh, observation is actually going to be about this last cell. You wouldn't think it uh, in, that, in that case, but it's actually going to be tied to something that's true in either of these scenarios. Sometimes you'll hit a either or point in a puzzle and you'll guess and figure out which one breaks. And actually, before you sometimes go down that path, you look at like what may be consequences of filling it in. If, if we took this cell, neither of these would be used, but we would have now made three large in this group and this one gets shaded. So if this cell is shaded, this cell is shaded. We know that for sure. If this cell, on the other hand, is shaded, this cell isn't used and this cell isn't used. Again, this one can only take two more. So a, a different logical clue we could put into the grid is this. And so if you see that this forces this and similarly this forces this, um, in, both, in both scenarios, that cell is taken. And that actually gives us a fair amount of logic uh, to take forward. Finishing out that group, this is a no two by two. This is fulfilling the one, two, three in this column. What we'll see is we actually get a space where uh, we have to get some stuff out of this space, uh, out of this side of the grid and into the rest of the grid. There's gonna be a one and a cancellation for the rest of that uh, side. And the thing to think about looks to be Actually, I haven't touched this clue at all. I think it's going to come when we fill this in. Um, this, this has no way to use these singletons as scene buildings. It needs to see a 1 and a 2. And I think now we may have um, the, the opportunity for the key step, um, which is going to come here. Uh, I've marked one of these is unused, one of these is unused. There's actually a, a third X we can mark. I guess we can mark this is unused, but it's actually true. We can't shade both of these, and we can't shade both of these because one of these is shaded. If this is shaded, it's marking those two off. If this shade, it marks those two off. And so we can also mark this. And this X is actually pretty important because it says that the largest group that can be in either of these spaces is too long. And this outside clue is a two or larger. Uh, if this were any different than a one, a two is not going to be larger than this. So this has to be a one, and the two will complete it. And uh, that, by just the nature of force, is going to give us what happens in the grid. What we'll see is that we have to take at least one of these cells, at least one of these cells. They're going to be diagonally either of these options. In this option, the top of the top it connects, but these two x's now isolate. You can draw a diagonal set of lines like this, but isolate the top from the bottom, where the other way of shading it that connects the lefts together like this at least still leaves these two points for the left side to continue and for the top right to continue and get connected. Um, this column clue looks like it comes back into play right now. It can only have as many as two, given the first is two. So now, to stay connected, all of these are used. The three clue told us we could only take one in the space. This two clue says we can't take this cell because we don't end up seeing just one building or one shaded set of top of cells. So these are shaded to keep this connected. This is shaded to keep things connected. Three and four would work, but not four and four for this clue. So 
so that these are forced. And just looking in the grid, these are all valid. So the last thing to resolve the puzzle is going to be this clue. And it can take both of these cells and become a 5 and a 3. That's not going to show 2. It could take the top 3 and be 3, 1, 3. That's not going to be 2. It has to be this bottom one and not the top one and be 1 and 3. So we've talked our way through this challenging puzzle. It had a set of uh, different deductions at the start, but the key ones were to recognize how a large 3 clue will always use the A cell and a 1, 2, 3 type uh, shading but also the very first part of such a clue is a singleton, and that puts a constraint on this cell. This clue then interacts eventually, giving us one of these cells, which interacts over here. We get a lot of the top. And then the real end of the puzzle used two kinds of steps, connectivity in general. How do the, these regions at the top get together? But it really looked at this interacting square, and starting with this either-or pair said, regardless of which either-or is around it, what affects other cells? And so looks like this shading the cell by logic uh, is one that forces a lot of the rest of the grid and then dealing with the remainder of the square uh, does the rest. So pretty narrow solving path overall for a puzzle, but a lot of clever logic tricks. And if you ever run into a top of skyscrapers again, some of these tricks will certainly come at play, particularly for how the exterior clues work in aggregate. So we'll see you again soon.